Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Something to Do with Pete and Will. We promise it's something to do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to it's an episode of It's Something to Do, and we promise it's something to do. T- today, we're featuring Robbie Cole, who is a wonderful comedian and actor, uh, a friend of mine, and um, given Will's circumstance with his, his child, there's going to be times that uh, we'll be able to spend time with Robbie as well. And so, welcome, Robbie. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's wonderful. I don't have anyone in my life, so I'm, <laughs> I'm always available. Yeah, uh, I love that about you. So, how's everything going? What's been the latest? Uh, it's all right, man. It's um, uh, I had a COVID scare, so I was stuck at home for like several days in isolation until the results came back, and that was that was pleasant. What happened there? Uh, I just sort of like was told. That I was exposed to somebody who had COVID, so I had to go get tested, and then it ended up being a lot of nothing. But uh, I'm now we're like 18 months in, still never got it. Oh, Staying good. Strong. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, you're a comedian and actor, but because everything kind of shut down, you've gone back to kind of your roots and and uh, working in the restaurant industry. Yeah. And, uh, how, how's that been? Um. Well. When restaurants first reopened, um, there was this brief window of like maybe two weeks where we were heroes. Right. People were thanking <laughs> us for our service. Yeah. Uh, that quickly ended. Now it's like, where's my fucking ranch? <laughs> Ask for extra ranch, you dick. You're like, well, well, I mean, that's been I, all right. You know, I, I, was, I, was, I thought it was a, you know, like yeah, I was a hero. I was, I was front line working. I was a front line. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's been yeah. nice. I've just been getting back now that like the world is. I also love. We say things like, "Oh, now that we're in a post-COVID world," like no, we're still very much in the middle of COVID. Yeah, I mean, we are. Are I think our numbers are still like thousands and thousands a day. Thousands of deaths a day. Like we're back at where we were. Yeah. Uh, but everyone's just like, no, it's normal. Go back to go back to work. But um, I uh, I've been getting a lot of auditions again, which is nice. But uh, it's everything is on Zoom now uh-huh. or self tape, and it's just auditioning is so goddamn embarrassing. Well, so what are the kind of things you've been doing? Well, there's one where it's like, all right, so in this one in the spot, you're gonna be you're driving down the road, and uh, you know you're uh, looking out the window and you're seeing stuff, so you're reacting. But they're just like, hey, all right, so, so like go sit on and like <laughs> go sit on a chair in your kitchen, and uh, yeah, and again, exactly, just like here, just like mm. I'm like oh, what's that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I should have been a welder. Yeah, exactly, union job. Uh, oh, that's great. But you're but you're getting back out there then. At least that's good. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting back out there, so it's nice. I think I'm, I'm shooting something on Sunday for um, uh, college football. Oh, that's cool. They're pretty vague about it. It's just show up. Yeah, that's a lot. So a lot of these jobs are just like, "Hey, we're gonna pay you twelve hundred dollars. Show up at this time." And I'm just like, "What are we shooting? College football?" Yeah. Well, college what is, football. Okay. All right, I'll be there. Like, am I a player? Am I? <laughs> Yeah, you've seen me, right? But, yeah, I can, I can make it work. Yeah, got this into a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> it's what, funny, uh, what I tell you know when I've when I've talked to you. Of course, um, you look exactly like Russell Brand when you pull your hair back and you take your glasses off. Oh yeah, you, know, you look exactly like him. I mean that that is a dead on Russell Brand. <laughs> That's why I don't pull my hair back and take my glasses off <laughs> well he might make more money yeah. like oh, we can't afford him <laughs> but i was talking about you being a comedian um 
and actually i was watching some of your spots because you've got some stuff up on youtube and it's really funny like some of the stuff you're talking about you you had a uh a diabetes joke which i thought was really funny oh yeah yeah thank i don't want to i don't want to butcher it but you know yeah thank you for not for not doing that you yeah. know really uh, cut the legs out from me you know well ironically that's part of the joke <laughs> Uh, we call it callback yeah of course so are you gonna get back out there and do that stuff uh, anytime soon or yeah i've done i don't i've done a couple sets recently slowly getting back in it's still weird just like being in a comedy club and just inside a small crowded enclosed space and yeah. just being like hey guys remember the last year and a half what are you doing here why are you breathing on me and it becomes an issue of like do you bring up covid at all do you do you talk about it like the elephant in the room or do you just is it weirder to just do your act like nothing has happened so it's like um yeah what, well what, what's your take on that i like to just do my act I'll, i've mentioned it before but like in a sort of just like i don't have any like bits about covid you know i also feel like if you do they need to be very personal to you you can't just be like, hey, here's that funny thing that killed your grandma, you know? Well, yeah, that's true. You have to be, it's a sensitive topic. Well, that's like 9-11. Like after 9-11, there were some comedians that went out. Yeah, well, 9-11 was just inherently funny, so. <laughs> exactly. That's, the, that's, that's, yeah. The, <laughs> the, 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 uh, yeah, so there were some comedians that went out right after that and, and, and talked about it. What's interesting about Robbie as well, uh, for those that you, um, those of you that don't know who Robbie is, he's um, Hispanic and Jewish. And um, oh, oh, for two. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's spectacular. Uh, you're able to, to work in many different uh, genres and and say things that most people wouldn't and then after the fact say uh-uh i'm jewish Actually, yeah you're... I, i'm jewish i run this town so <laughs> watch out yeah exactly uh but that's not something that that people would know i think it's just it's it's a wonderful aspect of who you are yeah um, it's hard to i feel like people can't ever really tell just by looking at me when i am mm -mm. like it's just drugs they think well, they wouldn't, yeah. That, well, that certainly would be the thing that they would start with. Yeah, like this guy. Like, what do you think my ethnicity is? Like Welsh? I don't know. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, you're just like, you're just white. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't differentiate between the whites. Yeah. Oh, I'm Scottish. Well, shut up. <laughs> you're, just, you're just white. Yeah. You can get a bank loan. Yeah. And you talk about that on stage a little bit, which is great. And I, I think that's cute. The, uh, well, not cute. I, it's very funny. Um, but uh, yeah, what else is going on? So like getting back into the the um, restaurant world is, I mean, that's got to be kind of a kick in the dick. A little oh, bit. yeah. I'm just about ready to call it quits again. It's yeah. uh, new people. It's, uh... Well, and it's, you, you've got a track too like it's oh yeah, yeah i drive 45 minutes each way to get yelled at by people um, <laughs> i enjoy bartending because you can be a dick to people as a bartender and you still have the power because they need alcohol right you're the one giving it to them so they're respectful whereas they're, if you're, you're making their eggs over my hammy yeah <laughs> well this is not talk about up? Oh, anyway, eggs over my hammy one of the all-time great puns <laughs> yeah. like Daddy's really knocked out of the park on that one. Right. They don't do anything else well, but eggs over my hammy. Mm. <laughs> you know exactly what's coming out. Salute. I hope I hope the guy who came up with that, or girl, I don't want to be, I don't know why I gendered them. Uh, I hope the person who came up with that got a bonus. Yeah, exactly. But uh yeah, bartending I enjoy because as a server, you're Someone's just like, they could just be like, hey, idiot, I need more ranch. And you're just like, yes, sir. Good one, sir. <laughs> As a bartender, it's like, shut up, dummy. I'll get with you when I'm ready. And they're yeah, just exactly. like, okay, whenever, whenever you have time. Yeah. 
please. I, 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 I can, I'm I can an literally alcoholic. Cut I just really need this. Yeah. And once you're cut off, that's that. You're out of here. Oh, oh I, I wrote down. I, I, I was talking about life with a roommate. And I don't have a, well, I mean, I, I guess I technically have a roommate, but uh, your roommate seems to be a very interesting character. That you enjoy yeah it's with. been it's been nice so i live i live in a giant like giant multi-bedroom townhome in echo park mm-hmm. um and i live my roommate is my best friend of many many years yeah. so and we were quarantined yeah. together and remember early quarantine which feels like 18 years ago yeah there was uh everyone's like oh it's gonna be tough all these people forced to live like in close quarters they're going to get on each other's nerves and like we lucked out because like we've hated each other for <laughs> 10 years now so we couldn't like there was not another nerve of which to step on um yeah because i remember yeah, I'd, uh, I'd call you and, and listen to your old back and forth i was like Are you guys okay this is our, our season opener by the way <laughs> oh wow yeah. ah, you got you just, like you're bringing in the big guns for <laughs> You know, you just wanted the, for too long, this podcast has been starved for the sight of a real man. So uh, <laughs> you want to bring in my massive audience to kind of give you guys a bump. Well, listen, I go on to a, a, a website called Clapper. And the so people the people who have the clap, you know. Yeah, so the, the, there's, there's a, a, a fellow on there who's, who's a very nice guy. And we had talked about in one episode that we would go ice blocking in Virginia. And what you do is you get, you buy an ice block and you'd sit on it and you slide down a golf course into the, you know, the water hazard, which is usually a complete cesspool. Um, and so he did that with his kids. And um, he got like 150,000 views. <laughs> I was like, well, that, can that translate over to YouTube? Because we've got like 38 people that watch the stupid thing. <laughs> wow. Thank you, all the bots who watch this, by the way. <laughs> exactly. I paid for 38 bots. Yeah. <laughs> Just ice blocking in Virginia. You guys really got nothing better to do out there? Yeah. Uh, it was fun. Uh, that was you guys got rid of the slavery, you were just, I don't know. <laughs> What are we going to do today? Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how's your family? How's your relationships and stuff like that? Oh, we're, I, I don't know. It was an emotional support <laughs> podcast now. Well, we're just talking about life. Um, they are at a healthy and respectful distance. Perfect. What is the next topic, Peter? <laughs> Big meat Pete, everybody. Yeah. Everybody else calls me smiling Pete, but Robbie likes to call me Big Meat Pete. And it's because I like large steaks. It's it's not inappropriate. (laughs) (laughs) What was interesting about, uh, I'll say a friend of mine, he would have a bunch of drinks and then in order not to be caught, having had a bunch of drinks, go swim for like two hours <laughs> in order to not be caught doing that. And I thought that was a wonderful thing. Uh, you might surmise who that friend was, but, you know. <laughs> I think this, this podcast is just uh, called Getting All Up In My Business with Peter Osterhaus. I didn't say anything about you. Uh, oh, it couldn't be me because you said it was a friend of yours. You're a very close friend of mine. But yes. It we'll see me. after this recording's done. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about like comedy on the road because when you had talked, uh, when you and I, because we spent hours talking to each other. Yeah. But you would talk about how the way that comedy works is and I, I don't think many people know this is you've got a host an opener feature and then headliner 
And depending on where you land in that, it depends on how much you, you make during that, that situation. Right. And I, I would, I would talk to you at some point and, and you'd say, Oh, I'm driving out to Cincinnati or, you know, St. Louis or wherever it was. I was like, why are you driving? Like, wouldn't you? It's like, because if I fly that I, I get nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh... So I generally, for the shows that I like to do, there's usually just uh, three, it's a three person. There's the MC, uh, which is usually supplied by the club, the home club themselves, and then the feature, and then the headliner. And then normally as a feature, you team up with the headliner and they take you on the road. And if they're working the good clubs, they the club will pay for your travel. But if the, those are like the A clubs, those are your like, your improvs throughout the U.S. are usually really good about that. Or helium uh, or things like that. If you get into the better college gigs, they're good. If you get into the, the lower tier clubs, um, then they um, expect you to provide your own travel. And so you can like try to line up um, shows that are on like a driving path um, I did over a week shows from LA to Chicago driving. And that was a fun one that that worked because it was able to like, we can get to this town by this time, make some money. Those shows didn't give us even like hotels. So it was, we're going to sleep in the car and then you just park in Walmart parking lots because they're usually open 24 hours. They're safe ish. Um, so I was just like going into the Walmart bathroom in the morning to brush my teeth. And then I was there with that roommate and we were on the road and that was like, all right, we were going to each town. Um, I was a single man at the time. And it was like, the plan is we'll do the shows. We'll sleep in the car or uh, maybe you'll find a nice young lady who you can stay with that night. And it's really like, I was more interested in just having a bed to sleep on. Yeah, of course. Driving in a uh, Honda Civic, but we had so much stuff in the back that I couldn't even recline my pass, my driver's seat <laughs> on the way back. So it was just <laughs> yeah. sleeping, sitting up. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's an interesting life. Sometimes you'll work a club and they have they don't give you a hotel so i just did the san jose improv and they you know they put you in the fairmont in downtown san jose which is like a really oh, nice, nice. so that's that's always clutch but i've done clubs that they it's a thing they call the comedy condo it's just yeah, like the comedy the, condo where it's just if you take a blue light in there it's just a yeah, mess. yeah the club owns like a like a an apartment or whatever and it's always just like bring your own sheets bring like don't touch anything um the big thing i was was like if there's any food in the fridge even just like staples you know like anything like sauces and stuff don't eat anything there because yeah. comics are awful people and they'll think it's funny to <laughs> mess with your food yeah oh yeah, yeah I, the the the, uh, <clears throat> the comic world for me is just so interesting, and I you know I I've I've only done it a couple times, but um, but I've never traveled or been part of like being a road dog kind of thing, and so like road dogging it that's that is a whole other I mean that ball game is very different. Yeah, it's I'm done with it. You know, it's uh, yeah. I think that's a young man's game. And like, you know, when I was a younger man, it was fun. And just the idea of being like, gonna go to a new town, do jokes, get fucked up, like try to hook up with somebody in the next morning, we're on the road doing it again. But now it's like, I just like sleeping. Exactly. Or it's especially <laughs> when we met, when I, when I bought my house, when I lived in the valley, uh -huh. it's like, I just like my house. Like, I want to just like, you know, yeah, I put in a new kitchen. I want to enjoy the kitchen i built you know i don't want to be in i want to go buy chicken and buy some broccoli and cook it yeah and then sit down in a safe space and then yeah. lay down in a soft space it's like i don't want to be in 
goddamn El Paso at the comic strip. <laughs> and Sorry, I, thank you, thank you, El Paso comic strip for booking. <laughs> yes, but exactly. Like, we cast uh, no dispersions on anybody, but it just it was, in in the lifestyle, if you're if you're in a situation where you've got to stay at the Motel Six or whatever it is that's around the corner, and they've yeah. had the same room for six years, you're like, oh, jeez. Yeah. It's, it's uh, a, it says do not disturb all the time. Disturb, disturb, disturb please. it, please. Disturb everything. <laughs> yeah, it is very disturbing. But uh, yeah, it's a, uh, you know, it's a choice. I'm just trying to get back into scripted television so I could stay in town. Yeah, stay local. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So how are the auditions going? Do you think? Um, they're going pretty well. I just got a new, I signed with like a much better commercial agent. So they send me on less auditions, but they're all much better. higher quality projects. Yeah. yeah, good. So that's nice. I, um, it's funny. I was just, um, I had booked a big national commercial that was going to like, you know, not life changing money, but it would have been like a solid, like, 20 to 30 grand sure for one day of work yeah, so fantastic I would, have, I would have been the way i live that sets me for a long time sure um and i was in uh i had because i was just going through like memories kind of thing on my phone and uh that second callback which was like this is the one where you're either going to get it or it's to somebody else and they're just like cool like you got it was like march 8th 2020 oh, and shoot. we were going to start shooting like march 20th of 2020 yeah like, but there's a there's a, a tidal wave of pandemic coming <laughs> everything shut down and got canceled and i was oh, also bummed because it was for nintendo which is like mm -hmm. basically my actual you know who actually raised me was nintendo so yeah. it would have been really nice working with the family yeah and uh, that all got, you know, obviously the world just stopped for and that first that first six months. Oh man, I was, so I live right uh, off Sunset Boulevard mm -hmm. and I was just remembering that first Friday of lockdown at like nine, nine o'clock at night, I walked down to Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles, California and there wasn't a single car driving on sunset. Right. And I walked down sunset in the middle of the street for four blocks to where sunset overgoes another very uh, crowded street, Alvarado, if you're a uh, local. Uh -huh. And not a single car driving there at nine o'clock on a Friday night. And that was the first time when I was just like, wow, this is something's happening here. It was like you and Tom Cruise and Times Square, that, that yeah, one, like, whatever yeah, that movie it was, that, that's just Tom Cruise alone in Times Square. Yeah, Vanilla Sky. Vanilla Sky, that's right. Came out 20 years ago this week, actually. Hey, look at you. Look at that. What can had I say? I, had I bet, I would have lost. Nah. If you knew what that was. <laughs> yeah. No, but that, yeah, I mean, they paid a fortune for that, but you got it for free. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really incredible. Yeah, this is. I mean, the year has been just insane out here, um, as far as cancellations and and things that have impacted all of us. Um, and that's why it's something to do. And that's why it's something to do. Yeah. <laughs> Exists. <laughs> what are you up to, bud? Well, last week I was really sick. Um. I had a, a, a tooth, uh, well, I'm not exactly sure. So it, it started, the week started with my daughter, somebody in her class got COVID. And so she had to stay home. And then I had to go get a, I, I had some tooth work done at the beginning of this, maybe two years ago. And I hadn't had it treated because of the pandemic. So I had to have it treated. And, um, after it was treated, it just bled profusely for days. And so um, that manifests itself. I, and it's all the details are 
or a little bit gross, but but it manifests itself into a pretty big problem. And um, um, and I couldn't walk, and I got fever, so I had to sequester myself. My birthday was last weekend, and I had people in from Texas that I couldn't see. And they're staying at the house, and I I couldn't leave my room, and so it was kind of that kind of sucked. But uh, yeah, so it's been a it's been a tough. So I'm I'm in a recovery week right now. That was not at all the answer I was expecting. <laughs> um, you thought it was gonna be like, it's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> at least at the very least, it'd be like that's good. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it was pretty it was pretty dramatic and. Uh, but I'm out the other end uh, and doing as well as I can be. So, Hey, I, I am glad that you remain among the living. So. Yes. Yeah. It, it's, it's all fine. Um, but uh, yeah, the girls are doing good. They're back in school and, Bridget's busy at work. Um, she's had has some. She been on, has she been on the podcast? No. <laughs> this is just that weird little thing she tolerates you doing. Well, no, she, she's a publicist. I'm like, well, will you publicize the podcast for Christ's sake? She's like, no. And well, what am I going to publicize? What do you have? I mean, 100 followers? Who cares? Now that you got a star power. <laughs> Who's got two thumbs and gets on stage? Wow. This guy. But uh, yeah, so anyway, and it's funny because Will, his wife, is the same thing. She's a publicist and, and uh, she's like, what am I going to publicize here? Uh, like, there's nothing. Wh- like, what do you want me to do? You, you guys are, you guys you are dicking start, around. <laughs> you need to start getting uh, some ad buys. What's that? You need to start getting some ad buys. Well, that's well. I've been working on that, but we, our numbers are 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 low. Like we'll we'll hit, we'll, we've we've hit hundreds of thousands of people, but it isn't translating mm-hmm. to monetization. So not so far as is like YouTube is concerned, because that like that's Let's, that's uh, where how about, I'm going to help you out here. How about mm-hmm. we uh, we're going to just start doing some ad copy and then. If it hits, hopefully, then those products will uh, decide to give you money for this. Well, that's well, that's what I do. Is I like the last episode, I, I hold up a uh, Coke can. I'm like, sponsors at the end of the show. <laughs> they don't come because <laughs> there's no sponsors. But I've reached out to sponsors, and so there are sponsors that are watching and seeing what the trajectory is and things like that. But it's it's not. I mean, the, the algorithm is is it's really difficult to to traverse so we'll see pete, you just gotta uh, stick with it we got 25 hours up there pete i'm sorry that you had a tooth issue and you almost perished but i'm glad that you're alive and anyone else who is alive out there need a website squarespace is an excellent solution <laughs> exactly use uh use code big meat pete for 10 yes. percent off your first order of a website right oh uh, there you go perfect Blue oh, problem solved. Have you guys had an issue in the bedroom? Get Blue Chew. Blue Chew uses all the same ingredients for much less of the cost as Cialis and Viagra. Blue Chew. <laughs> and after you're done using that Blue Chew to satisfy your partner, why not treat them to a Bouquet from Sherry's Berries. <laughs> Sherry's Berries makes a delightful post postcoital gift. Yeah. Use code Big Me Pete. Ten <laughs> percent off your first order of Sherry's Berries. See, look at this. See, we're just we're printing money here. Uh, edible arrangements. They're fantastic. When you don't want to give a bouquet, because everybody gets a bouquet of flowers, send edible arrangements. It's a bouquet of flowers you can eat. 
<laughs> I love edible arrangements because it's like, uh, do you want to give somebody a gift but don't know anything about them? Yeah. Fruit. <laughs> exactly. Cantaloupe. Uh, honey, dude, that's the, the money. <laughs> no, nobody wants the honey, too. That's the joke about the honeydew. I like honeydew. But they yeah. say at the, at the end of the fruit bowl, it's always the honeydew. It's just all honeydew, yeah. Oh, I like that stuff, though. Oh. Well, yeah, that's something to do. Maybe blow my nose. Will says you're a pro. Like you, didn't, you did it off. Off mic. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. Will says it looks like I'm gonna blow because I no. can <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, let's let's uh, <laughs> let's start business. Woo! Let's get back into it here. Oh, let's see. Oh, what do I have here for you? So what, 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 what's interesting is like the sets that you work on because you work in all different capacities on a set. Sometimes you're featured, sometimes your background, sometimes whatever. Yeah. What, how, what do you glean from that? Like how, how, how can uh, you describe to people that don't know anything about that? So, so acting, acting is the worst job. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, but it's also uh, it's also job that you job that you can complain about, about because, because well now I'm yeah I'm on, set for, for, I'm on set I'm on set for 15 hours, hours but uh, the gaffer is on set for 22 hours and I'm literally just playing dress up for a living so uh, but I've I've started I did it all I started in background which is just literally you're just wardrobe that moves you're a prop um, and but it's like an easy job and you get fed and it's a good way to st it's not a way to start like if you want to be an actor being background does not serve you in realizing your goal of being an actor other than that it gets you paid so you can pay your rent having the mindset that this is just a job makes things so much easier because i'll work on sets and they'll be like done 17 hour days um pretty bad conditions and uh i'll work and you just meet all kinds of the weirdest people in background it's like uh background is like the unemployable that's their that's where they shine yeah yeah and you as long as like you understand like this is just the job that's fine but you meet people who think like this is going to be my big break being <laughs> in the background of a 400 person crowd scene is going to be the thing that pushes me to the top well and they they talk about it with you which is very unusual and you're like well what are you doing yeah i also just have that kind of face that people just like to talk to me uh but uh yeah so being on set and and yeah there's there's people in there that that think that this is where i'm going to be found like and you're talking to like a 66 year old yeah <laughs> you're like, well like what do you, what I, do you do? I appreciate you saying that but you're in the background pretending to talk to somebody <laughs> yeah like i was on westworld um the hbo series and mm. huge call and i got uh like the next bump up to like sort of featured um so they would be like oh we're gonna put you here specifically but then you have people like trying to work their way in so they always be at the front and i'm just like it's not my job to tell you that you're not supposed to be here but i'm also <laughs> like dude like you're not getting paid more yeah <laughs> i'm getting paid more you're not well that was and, you in the the katie perry video i mean you're you're literally featured in that video you're yeah yeah and then seen. they pulled me out and they had me do like a establishing shot kind of thing but it's like on that west world and i was just like dude this is just a job this is just like, yeah. And it was good money. Like, I mean, it was way too long, but what other job can you just basically stand around and get fed and make 700 bucks in a night? Like, yeah, exactly. But these people think that, like, oh, if they see me up front, they're going to be <clears throat> like, someone's going to pause and, like, wait, who's that person in the background? I need to make them a star. 
<laughs> Nobody. <laughs> and then making the the move up, I well, shot a commercial. That, that's why the commercial things are so good. You're making twenty, thirty thousand dollars a day. Like that's a yeah. that's a different ball game. And then I I I, sh- I moved up and I shot a commercial for ESPN where I was. I moved up from being background and sort of like featured background and then principal and the yeah. jump from background to principal was the difference between like four hundred dollars and eight thousand dollars for the day yeah, <laughs> yeah that's and awesome so i got that first principal job and th- there's also like without getting to the economics of our industry it used to be all residuals Mm-hmm. And a commercial, you can make an easy 80 to 100K if it ran a lot. But now mm-hmm. everything's moving to buyouts, or it's like we're going to just give you one big buyout for so like. Up, so you do upfront. Upfront. There, there's no back. back there's no yeah. back end. And they're trying to move to a lot of non union stuff. They support IATSE, um, which I do, like working on any sort of Me set. Me too. Like, I'm, I'm local 53. Local 53, yeah. It's. Um, just the amount of ridiculous hard work that goes into any shoot. And so I went to film school and just getting those first jobs out of film school, we were just like PAing on a local shoot where they're like, Hey, do you want to make a hundred dollars to work 20 hours today? And you do it because that's well, like, at that point. Yeah, you do it. Cause you're, it's all, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like sweat equity. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. You have to work your learning, way, mm-hmm. work your way through it. And like, I'll be on these shoots and like Westworld, 17 hours. And all I could think was like, 17 hours for me is a solid 24 hours for this crew. Yeah, for sure. And it was 17 hours, three days back to back to back. Oh, geez. And it was like, I hope you're doing split shifts. I hope I don't know what's happening here. Like, yeah, hopefully they have A B crews. Yeah, yeah, because it's yeah, it's a it's a brutal it's a brutal industry, and it's one of those things too where like the difference between above the line and below the line is just so night and day. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> like, the yeah. kind of money you're making and the lifestyle. Well, I, what was interesting was I would ride the line. Because mm-hmm. if I was DPing something or something like that, so I'm I'm kind of just riding the line. Yeah. But essentially, I'm you know it's a below the line job. But you've got people that are below the line. Yeah. And they're just back there like just waiting to be told what to do. Whereas yeah. I have to like actually kind of yeah. direct things into a exactly yeah. When I did that ESPN shoot, it was interesting because we shot at the Rose Bowl and there was like the the call for all the background people and they had their own holding and then there was us you know the real actors so you actually you actually had crafty not just a bag of cheetos yeah yeah (laughs) everybody was but it was weird because i had like you know i'd done so much background stuff that like i recognized some of my friends who were in background and it felt this weird felt like a high school movie where i was at the popular table yeah you know and like They'd come over and hey, and then someone was just like, "Oh, you can't, you can't be here. <laughs> Go back to your area." Yeah, exactly. It's like being in first class. Yeah, exactly. Can I, can I use the bathroom up there? No, uh, but no, nobody's no. using the bathroom. Yeah, no. I know it's nice. Yeah, it's for the eight people up here. You two hundred and fifty-two people, you use that shit yeah. in the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just getting back into that. Um, you know, hopefully I just, I want to book, I've been going out for a lot of good things and I've had some like really good callbacks. And that's also the nature of, I go into every audition thinking that I'm not going to get it. So. Well, that's good. Yeah. You know, temper, you know. Well, you got you to manage your expectations and know yeah. that, right. Well, I'm going to go do it because I care. I'm going to give it what I can give it. I also love a lot of acting is just lying. Cause I mean, what is acting if not lying, but, uh, I had this audition and like you have like skills and it's like oh we need like basketball players and it's like i played basketball before <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't know I'm, if your, I'm your guy i don't know if they're expecting me to like put on 360 windmill dunks or anything 
Yeah, but you played sports. I mean, you were a very good, accomplished yeah. baseball player. So, I mean, you yeah, know what's going on. And that's also, I love, like, that's the one skill where I'm like, oh, I do baseball really well, except, like, I can't wear a baseball hat, you know? So I just, I look the least like that. Well, you can if you pull it back. Oh, uh, you're trying to get me to look like Russell Brand again. I see. No, no, I don't know. I don't mean that. I'm, I'm being, I'm not, I'm not being facetious. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm no, serious. Like, to... you, you can smush yeah. it. Yeah, I could smush it in there. Yeah, but, um, easy. One, I, I, I had a call back for the spot and I was going to shoot in Mexico City. Uh-huh. And they were like, you need a valid passport. And I was like, yeah, of course I have that. And then I checked and my passport's <laughs> expired. And I was like, I'll figure it out. Yeah, of course. I mean, well, yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah, I'm not going to tell them no. Exactly. You fake it till you make it. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the whole thing. The, the, this whole industry is you fake it till you make it or it's who you know and all that kind of stuff. And people say that as a cliche, but that is that is actually very, very true. Yeah. You, you tell them yes, because you know that you can do it. Yeah. And then you accomplish it. Yeah. Even though during those moments where you're kind of panicking because I have no idea what's going on, you were smart enough to, to figure it out very quickly. My favorite story, my ex, um, she, when she was like doing actress, uh, she was an actress and a model. Mm-hmm. She had on her, you list your skills, you know, you could like sing anything, anything that might bump you up. And like on a lot of the websites, they're literally just like check boxes. Like I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Juggling. So, yeah. <laughs> Cartridge. Oh, like magic. And she clicked <laughs> yeah. magic. Um, she thought it was funny. Yeah. And then she gets into an audition, uh, you know, and she's like wearing like a, you know, like a, you know, like really tight little black dress because it's like one of those. And they're like, perfect, come in. And she's in the waiting room. And there's a bunch of other just like model types and perfect. And then she goes in and they're like, all right, so if you can just like do us like a quick little magic trick. We have, uh, I don't know if you, we have like, you know, like if you do like sleight of hand, we have like cards and she's just like, excuse uh, me yeah i mean so pick a card any card <laughs> she's like it's one out of 52 i might get I like this she just, like she just like hit a point where she was like i'm going to respectfully just get out of here <laughs> oh she just bailed <laughs> yeah thank you for your time yeah she had a quarter no i did a lot of auditions during the world cup and i'm sure i'll do that again because i look like a lot of different countries people Mm -hmm. they're like he's colombian he's egyptian um and they're like can you can you like dribble a soccer ball i was like sure i can't i learned (laughs) i will give it a college try yeah (laughs) i was like i'll just be the i'll just be i'll be the guy on the sidelines (laughs) <laughs> i'll be like the really supportive teammate hey that's amazing ronaldo yeah Messi. wow you kicked that right over your head and then kicked right back to your foot that's amazing all right let's all right. go team yeah <laughs> ending on a tie great <laughs> well brother <clears throat> if this is what we're going for we nailed it <clears throat> all right and uh, I really appreciate you coming in and, and uh, being a part of this. And I look forward to us doing this again. Of course. Thanks for having me. Every, I just, to the 38 bots out there, thanks for listening. You're the reason <laughs> that this all happens. So. Yeah. You just have to look at the screen and say what is a light and what isn't a light. And then yeah. you got to click it so that we know you're not a robot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But thanks, man. I really do appreciate it. You got it, buddy. Um, I will see you around. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. It was something to do. It was it was something to do. We're gonna have a couple cuts. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Take it easy. Glad to see you.